Hello, everybody. It's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Thank you for joining me here on YouTube. Be sure to check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for everything Royal Caribbean related. RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Hello and welcome. Happy Monday, everybody. Thank you for joining us here. My goodness. I just ran back into the room. It was like at 730. I had everything ready to go. I just lost track of time. And we've already starting off with an epic super chat, Jan Fagan. Oh, thank you, Jan, for the super chat. My goodness. Let's get this party started. Much respect to Jan Fagan. What an awesome supporter of what we do here at Royal Caribbean Blog. Hello and welcome. We've got uh, Jennifer Kelm from MEI Travel. Becky Mankin from MEI Travel. Hello. Um, welcome, guys. Michelle B., hello. Lots to talk about today. Let's start with Michelle's question. What are your thoughts regarding the earnings call? Wow. There's so much optimism. Optimism is what I think. Uh, there's a lot that's there. Um, is there something specifically you want to talk? I mean, there's so much to talk about. But um, overall, the earnings call today, very optimistic. Good, uh, good look at the future there. So, uh, Tim Gallagher, hello. Welcome. Uh, Terry says, Matt, you need to buy Jan some Kraken, right? Oh, man. I can't wait to get on a cruise ship again, guys. We're going to, I'm hoping I'll, I'll be able to see a lot of you guys on board the ship and I hope we get to celebrate and have a great time together because that would be amazing. Um, Subzippo, hello. Brian Smith, hello. Joe Johnson, Keith Bruce, hello. Uh, Axel in the house. Yeah, Axel says, my Royal Caribbean stock is through the roof. Listen, it's not just good news for Royal Caribbean fans. It's good for invest, good news for investors as well. But Michael S. says, Matt was busy booking a cruise. I wish that was the case, but not the case this time. What's up, Michael? Hope you're doing well. Uh, Janie Fleming. Hello. Janie Fleming, I'm sorry. Hello. Mark the Shark. What's going on? And uh, Nathan, so much news today in easy digestible bites. Well, at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Yeah, absolutely. Super busy today, guys. I got up. Much earlier than I usually do. I was sitting there refreshing the Royal Caribbean uh, uh, investor page, trying to get that press release. It was late. It came out at like 8.07 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. And, man, let me say something. My fingers have been going crazy ever since I was writing a blog post all day, getting you guys the big stuff, the big news of the day. So lots happening, and I want to make sure you get all of it. Terry from Georgia, what's going on? So, yeah, the big news, obviously, today is Royal Caribbean uh, had their earnings call, fourth quarter earnings call. And you know what? It You've never seen such a happy crowd after losing a billion dollars with a B. Um, they had a billion dollar loss, but you know, um, the stock market is not about what you did yesterday. The stock market is about what you're going to do tomorrow. And uh, for, for Royal Caribbean, there's a lot of optimism um, all across the board that things are good for two main reasons. Number one, um, the numbers, the COVID numbers are going down, vaccine distribution going up. And in addition to that, bookings, people booking cruises, everyone in here, it's all your fault, uh, is also uh, up. And I think the combination of those two things has really sent, you know, a positive message, not only to Wall Street, because Wall Street's saying, you know what, um, there's definitely good news here, but also to, to cruise fans, um, a lot of there's, there's a lot of optimism and we haven't had a lot of optimism in the last year. You know, I mean, you guys could think back to like April, June, July, last week. No I'm kidding. But you know what I mean? Like, I mean, there have been so many months where it just was this black hole of like, I don't know when we're going to cruise again. You remember though, we'll be back. Well, you know, there was nothing really like now it seems like we're really moving in that direction, which is great news. Great news. So, yeah, keep up those positive vibes, Jennifer. I agree 100%. Um, it's fantastic. I love it. I think that um, the uh, this is, I mean, it, it's good news all around. Let's put it that way. And I, and I love that. So, um, and, and it gives, I think, a lot of people hope, and, and as well as myself, that, yes, we're going to be on cruises this year, which is something that, you know, you might have thought, I'm not sure about that. Brogan with the super chat. Thank you, Brogan. Hi, Matt. One year ago today, I was in Orlando for a cruise on Harmony of the Seas. Last cruise before COVID. Well, Brogan, look on the bright side. You are among the last people to say you're coming up on your one year. Uh, it's been one year since your cruise. 
Uh, Karen Bibby, can you cruise if you haven't been able to get your COVID shots yet? Well, no one go on a cruise right now, Karen. Um, that's a good question. But Royal Caribbean has not said if they will require the vaccine or not. So the answer to your question is n yes. It does not matter at this point. Could that change? Sure. But right now, I mean, obviously you're not going on a cruise anyway, but hey, they're just broken. Uh, Zach, thoughts on the shareholder benefits of owning Royal Caribbean stock? I've heard that if you get onboard credit you get doesn't combine with other promotions it's hard to use that was the case zach um they've actually uh, a little while ago i don't know a year or two ago now at this point they relaxed that makes it a lot easier that being said zach i think you should buy real caribbean stock for one reason and one reason only and that is you think it is a good investment that will that will give you money back in the long term i would not recommend buying any cruise line stock for the, any of the benefits they give you it's not really a reason i think to buy stock um it's just it's not the reason to get into it Charity Murphy, question, first ever cruise in 2022 on Quantum of the Seas. Does specialty coffee card cover iced coffees and frappe-type mocha drinks? They do. Yes, yes, they do. Indeed. When you go to uh, Cafe Patisserie, it is included over there. Uh, ben, when you were a kid, would you want to go on a cruise? Uh, not when I was a young kid, actually. I really wasn't even that aware of cruise. I mean, I think the Big Red Boat was a thing back then. But no, I really didn't get... The cruise bug hit my family right around when I turned, when my sister, yeah, I think it was her sweet 16. So I must have been like 18 or 19. And we went on our first cruise, maybe 17. Maybe it was a little earlier than that. No, sorry. I take that back. It was my youngest. Uh, maybe I was even older than that. I was in my, I think I was in my teens or early 20s. And my, one of my sisters wanted to go on a cruise for her birthday. And we we're like, okay, I guess. And boy, did my life change after that. Jody P, did Freedom of the Seas get upgraded? She did. Yes, she was the last ship to get fully upgraded. That happened right before the shutdown. So, uh, why are people being allowed to cruise overseas? Well, they're not Fatima. There are no cruises going on right now. Oh, unless you're talking about, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, Fatima. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about like cruises on Quantum of the Seas out of Singapore. That's because the local governments there have different approaches, different rules. I mean, obviously the pandemic is in a very different state in Singapore than it is here in the U.S. So that's part of it. Hey, Poochie from his honeymoon, man. You're supposed to be with us, but hello. Hello to you and Mrs. Poochie. Um, when is Odyssey of the Seas going to launch? Well, cruises, obviously, as you may know, are canceled through at least uh, the end of April. So there's that. But um, it looks like I've reported on this at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com uh, Saturday. It looks like there's a good chance that Odyssey of the Seas will have her conveyance begin on the at the end of this month around the 27th or so um there's a lot of ancillary evidence pointing to that matt puccio your granddaughter loves cruising she started at eight that's fantastic my kids love it i mean they absolutely do um let's see mike whelan we were thinking of repositioning cruise from england to new jersey in october 22 comments on if you've done that what should we expect I have not done a transatlantic, but it's a lot of sea days. As long as you like sea days, it's great. It's a good opportunity to explore the ship. Um, really get to know a ship very well. So you have to really be a big fan of sea days, to say the least, because there's a lot of them. Uh, not a real person. We ever see cruises to Mars, and will we need vaccines? Maybe and maybe. Pam, which ships have the bamboo room? Uh, Mariner of the Seas, Navigator of the Seas. Yeah, I think that's right. Maybe Freedom? Did Freedom get it? Now I don't remember. Definitely Mariner Navigator. Um, Christopher wants to know, uh, Christopher Netanyahu, what's your thoughts on Odyssey of the Sea Sailing this year out of Italy? I think like all cruises, there's a good chance of it happening on schedule. Um, they were talking about that earlier today. And a lot of it has to do with uh, really, you know, COVID uh, vaccine rollout to the public, following numbers, um, those kinds of things. You want to see th those numbers move in the right direction. Uh, Jason, is there any reason not to make payments towards your cruise in February 2022? I heard people ask about whether to make final payments, and I don't understand why that question comes up. Um, I think the, the 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 reason why people bring that up, Jason, it's a good question. The reason why people say they they, they question if they should make final payment is because they're they're concerned they're making payment for a cruise that will not sail. Um, it's it's like. I don't know what's a good example. I was going to say, like, you know, investing something in Kickstarter, knowing it's never going to, I mean, that's a bad idea because you know you're not going to, but basically people don't want to spend money to have it refunded later on kind of thing. Um, I, I can understand that to some extent. I think going forward, especially February 2022, I would not have that concern. Obviously, Jason, you won't have to make final payment until November or so this year. So you got plenty of time, but that's the rationale. I've been making my final payments because in the at the end of the day, 
If there's a chance my cruise can happen, I want to go on it. Ben, would you cruise right now with the regulations? Heck yeah, I would. I would do, I, what would you do for a Klondike bar is the same answer as what would I do for a cruise right now. Hello, Daniel from Fairfield Glade, Tennessee. I have no idea where that is. I mean, I know where Tennessee is, but not where Fairfield Glade is. Uh, does Izumi, does Quantum of the Seas have the Izumi option? Uh, Todd, hold on a second, Todd. Uh, there is Izumi. I know that because I think that was confirmed a while ago. But it's been so long, dude. I don't remember. These are the kind of things that if we were cruising, I would have known about. Hang on. Uh, Odyssey, Izumi? I swear I wrote about this on Rail Caribbean Blog. I swear I wrote about this, dude. Now I can't find it. So let me see if I can find it. No. No, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Michael S. with the super chat. Thank you, Michael. Matt, my jewel can of New England cruise was lifted and shifted to Voyager next year. Same itinerary. What are your top three Voyager recommendations? Ooh. 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 Uh, you got to see the ice show on board. You wait a minute. I'm thinking, Michael, because I, I Voyager got updated, but Voyager class. I mean, it's a little different. Peekaboo Bridge. Go find the Peekaboo Bridge on your ship. Very cool thing. You only find the Voyager class, and I believe it's still on Voyager. I don't think they got rid of it like they did on uh, Navigator. Um, number three. What would be number three? Hmm. I said the ice skating show. I'm trying to think of something good for you, Michael. I mean, obviously, there's some great bars on there, but I don't want to be like... I mean, the schooner bar is always a good show. I love the schooner bar in the Voyager class. Can't go wrong with that. I'll think of something good in about 30 seconds, Michael, and I'll be like, oh, remember that guy? Well, I mean, I remember it's you, Michael, but I'll yell out the answer then. But that's what I'm going with right now. Becky Mega says, in a New York minute, I miss cruising so much. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Taylor Diedrich, hello and welcome, Kathy L., Anthony says, what do you think about cruising to Cuba again? Is there a ship that can go there? Yes, Anthony, the answer is at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Royal Caribbean Talked answered that exact question today. And they said there is a ship. They didn't say which one, but they said it's a ship. Uh, would you guys have any guesses which ship it could be? And I have the, the obvious guess for me in Royal Caribbean's fleet would be grandeur. But I don't know if you guys have any other guesses other than that. Uh, Daisy Roman. Hello, Kathy Drew. What is going on? Robert Noble. Hello. Glad you like your lamp. Yeah, actually, um, my good friend, James Gatton made that lamp. Did a great job with that. What's the longest cruise I've done? I've done nine night cruise. If you count consecutive, like back to backs, and then I've done 10 nights. So I did a three, four and a three back to back to back. Mike says, I believe Odyssey has hibachi. Not sure if it's a zoomy. Well, it's one of the two. They're, they're, I mean, it's the same thing, basically. That's what I thought, Michael. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me honest on that one. Uh, why are taxes and port fees so complicated, Joe Albright wants to know? Well, it has really more to do with the ports in themselves. I mean, the, the taxes and fees for a port will vary from, obviously, port to port. Um, and it's just, I mean, Royal Caribbean does everything. I'm not sure what you mean by complicated. Um, so... Kathy L, I am hearing no back-to-back -back cruises. Is this true? Let me clear the air right now, guys. All right, hold on. Mic on. Mic test, one, two, one, two. Good, okay. No, it's not confirmed. I don't, I know where some of this rumors, have, there are rumors on the internet that back-to-back -back cruises will not be allowed. There's absolutely, positively, no indication from the CDC and or Royal Caribbean that that is a thing. No mention of it at all. Could that change? Sure. But right now, no. There's been, if you look through every page of the CDC's conditional sale order, if you look through all the protocols Royal Caribbean has that they've published so far, whether it's for quantum of the season Singapore or anything else in between, nothing about back-to-back -back cruises being prohibited. So um, that's all I can say. Uh, Ronan once I was my favorite ship. Yours is Harmony. Mine too, dude. I love Harmony of the Seas. Cruise Addicts with the super chat. Thank you, Cruise Addicts. Appreciate the super chat, buddy. Got my last cruise canceled. Do you think the Jones Act could be waived? Well, first of all, I'm going to push my imaginary glasses up my nose and say, actually, it's not the Jones Act. It's the Passenger Vessel Services Act of 1886, something like that. Uh, but it's the, the the Jones Act applies to cargo ships. The PVSA applies to cruise ships. Minor note. 
Do I think it could be waived? Could it be waived? Yes. Will it be waived? I don't think so. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe after a year, after everything happened in 2020, I don't know that they would allow that for 21 and necessarily happen, Cruz Addicts. The problem is, in my opinion, and again, I am not a Washington insider and all these, but this is a politics issue. And Alaska, while the plight of Alaska is tremendous, I mean, the economic ruin they're going to face with two years of no cruises is cray cray. Um, at the end of the day, Alaska doesn't drive a lot of political anything. They have no power. I mean, the you know, it's a small state. It's not like California or even Florida for that matter. So I would, I mean, in my opinion, I would say, of course, they should waive that because at least temporarily, what's the downside to doing that? But I just don't think it, it, in the grand scheme of politics, it's going to get enough momentum, certainly not in time anyway, to do anything, unfortunately. I could be wrong on that. I mean, it obviously could be waived, but I just, man, yeah. Um... James Gatton. What's up, James? Hey, I didn't know you were in here. Were there any news on the PBSA? Zip, zilla, zip zilch nada, my friend. Nothing about that, unfortunately. Danny DiMatteo, how many days on a cruise are you happy with? Like, in general? I mean, I was like seven night cruise. Is that what you mean? Or did I miss your, your question? Hey, Kelly Hardy from MEI Travel is here. Hello. Uh, Michelle, will Allure be getting playmakers? Right now, all upgrades, refurbishments, they're all on hold. Um, there's no... Um, uh, the, because of the shutdown and because Royal Caribbean lost a lot of money, they're not planning on spending that money. It's all the upgrades are on hold till further notice. When? I'm not sure, but, uh, Rick Morelli, what's your favorite dish at Giovanni's lasagna at lunch? Them's good eating for sure. Um, Dennis Orman, if I don't use all my onboard credit, do I get a refund or lose? It depends on the onboard credit you have. Um, it's kind of, I almost laugh at your question, Dennis, no offense, because I have never had any, any problem spending onboard credit, depending on how you get the onboard credit. Sometimes you can get a refund, like money out. Sometimes you don't. So, uh, James Gatton with a super chat. First, he makes this awesome lamp. Then he gives me a super chat. Thank you, James. If everyone listening, watching submits for a petition, we could get the PVSA waived. You know, what's, what's interesting, James, you know, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, right? You know that about me. I'll be honest, I don't think petitions do anything. I, I just don't, I think it's a waste of time. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm sorry. Um, I, it's like the one thing I'm, I feel very, not very strongly. I just, I never sign petitions. I think they're a complete waste of time. Unless you're running for like mayor in your town, then you have to do that. But for like federal changes, I, I don't think it, I don't think it matters anymore. But I would love for that to be the case, James. Don't get me wrong. I'm not supporting your idea. I just don't think petitions particularly work. But I would love, love for that to happen. I mean, it, it's, let me put it this way, James. I think here's the scenario I could see playing out. Um, the CDC gives conditional sale order. Cruises resume, I don't know, whatever, May, June, July, whatever. Let's call it by July at the earliest, okay? Um, and then uh, moving up a, a, a step, uh, at that point, you got cruises being able to cruise sail in the Caribbean. Then there might be more pressure, more interest in cruises being able to restart over, in, like, you know, then the big, okay, how about Alaska now? Now we really need to get these cruises going. Maybe that's the thing. James, another super chat. Uh, Robert made the lamp. You know, Robert, it's, thank you for the lamp. James took all the credit, man. When he gave it to me, he's like, listen, man, I made this with my own two hands. Um, you know, I didn't have any help from anybody. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I should have waited like 30 seconds for the text message to come in. Why'd you tell him that? No. <laughs> thank you, Robert. Appreciate that. Uh, John Dittmer, uh, my cruise is still set for May 3rd on alert. If they cancel, am I eligible for an FCC? Yes. If so, can I use some for onboard credit? No. FCCs that you get for a canceled cruise can only be used towards cruise fare. Michael White, how much swirling surgeons typically cost in the Bahamas? It depends where you do it. They're very inexpensive. Most, I mean, you can find some, I remember there's some for, you know, I mean, if you're going just like to a beach kind of thing and absolutely nothing else, you can get it for not that much. Uh, S. Benaglio, any thoughts on the CEO of Carnival saying he believes the full fleet could be in service by the end of this year? I was very surprised by that comment. Um, I wrote about that at royalgreenblog.com because it's kind of a bold statement to say the least. He said essentially, and I'm paraphrasing now because this is Carnival's CEO. This was like a week or two ago. He, actually, it was last week. He said that um, he expects most, if not all, the ships to be back in action by the end of this year. The key word was in action. I don't know what that means, but... It does seem like he has a very 
very uh, positive outlook on that. I, I listen. I am a glass half full kind of guy. I, I'm very, I'm very optimistic. I don't know that any fleet will be most, if not all, back in service by the end of 21. I could be wrong on that. Please, please let me be wrong on that. But um, I, I was, I was as surprised as you to say that, to see that. Matthew Henning, thank you for the super chat, guys. You guys are so generous today. Thank you. Matthew Henning, it's always a pleasure to hear you. I really appreciate your positive thoughts that this will eventually get back to on track. It will. Oh, no question about it. H hoping our trip from Australia, Trans-Pacific next April 22. I hope that goes as well, my friend. Um, we let me let me say this. I've said this on other platforms. I'm gonna say it here again. I I can only speak for myself. I will be on a cruise as a paying guest. I'm not talking about like you know, media cruise, things like that. I will be on a cruise as a paying guest by the end of this year. Whether it's one or ten, I'm not sure, but I will be on one. I really believe that in my heart of hearts. Uh, Wendy, cruise through Canada not going because we have barely anybody vaccinated. Estimated to have enough by Jan 22. Yeah, I mean, but here's the thing the about the estimates, Wendy. And it's not, you're not wrong. I, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, let's blame Canada, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to get into that. I just think that it was, the fact they banned cruises for a year seems a little premature. That's all. I'm not saying you can't extend the ban because you had a ban going. Do it with the CD, you know, go another couple months. But to just ban it for an entire 365 days seemed a little premature, especially considering where things are progressing right now, you know? Um, I also want to give a big shout out to uh, Emma, who had me on her channel on uh, Friday, if you guys caught that. We had a really nice cruise chat. Emma does a great job. Um, definitely check out her channel. She's awesome. I had a lot of fun talking to her. So I just wanted to make, before I forget, because I have like, oh, in my head, I'm like, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. And then it's like, you know. Kelly Hardy says, positive thoughts are what keep me going, right? Mike, how long can Royal Caribbean last without passengers coming up on a year with no passengers? Mike, check out the blog. They have a lot of cash on hand. Royal Caribbean today. At, sorry. I think the figure is as of uh, the end of the year. As of. As of December 31st, 2020. Royal Caribbean ha has a, approximately $4.4 billion, with a B, dollars on hand in liquidity. They got plenty. They'll be fine. They can take out more money. Kim Oakland with an epic super chat. Ooh! Thank you, Kim. For a group of four adults per day, Cabana or Coco Beach Club? Is an option to get the Cabana at the Beach Club? That would be my answer. I love Cabanas, Kim. I would rather have a Cabana. If you're saying Matt, Cabana or just regular admission to the Beach Club, Cabana. I think the service is worth it. Yeah, I was to do Cabana. If you're saying Beach Club Cabana, then I think you're talking to Becky Menken a lot, and I would agree that's a good idea. <laughs> Terry Pitts says, uh, just put me on a ship. I don't care if it's doing donuts in the ocean. Uh, a Mueller, I don't know if I heard correctly, but isn't Royal Caribbean building a bigger terminal at Galveston for bigger ships? What's the deal with that? They have plans for it. It got delayed. That was the case. It's actually been delayed, but construction should begin April 1. So we'll have more details about that as it comes out. But the Port of Galveston has said a couple times that Royal Caribbean said they committed to the project. So. Hey, we got another. Oh, my God. You guys are amazing with the Super Chats tonight. Kenny K coming with the Super Chat. I am jonesing for them to change the PVSA. Ah? 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 See what, I, see what he did there? Also about to book a floating cabana at Beach Club. Worth it. Uh, I've toured them. They are amazing. I had booked one, actually, to stay at, um, but that was the first cruise I had canceled back in March of last year. But let me tell you something, Kenny. It, uh, I think it absolutely... I, I walked through them on a previous visit, inspected them. I had my monocle on. I was like, see here, I hear you have a floating cabana. I'd like to check one out, please. I make this joke because I think all the Brits except for Brogan are, are asleep right now. And uh, let me tell you something. It was, uh, it was very nice. Very nice. Lorna says, do you think only seven night cruises will go this year? Um, that rule, Lorna, only goes through at least November. That could be extended, obviously. But who knows? Um, I would tell you this, Lorna. The faster things improve, the sooner cruises resume, the better, the higher the likelihood that longer cruises will be allowed to sail later on. Let's put it that way. Andy, with the drive towards larger, more economic ships, any opinion on what will happen to ports like Tampa, which have access challenges and smaller ships are eventually retired from the fleet? Good question, Andy. 
Um, I would say long term, you might not have so much Royal Caribbean ships there as you will have celebrity ships or Silver Sea, other ships in Royal Caribbean Group's fleet. Um, Royal Caribbean has been very adamant they're not building smaller ships, and the Port of Tampa has been very adamant that they're not building they're not building a new bridge. They're just not, and they're not building a new cruise terminal on the on the Gulf side either. Now Tampa is a bad example. I think you're probably talking about places like your question may be more like you know. Um, Where's the place that only small ships can get into? Otherwise, you know, Cuba to some extent and some other ports, right? Again, I think that's how Royal Caribbean is looking at it. It has less to do. Yeah, they're willing to give up on those places because number one, from a portfolio standpoint, Royal Caribbean Group has other ships that can get there. And number two, um, it's more about, you know, it's, it's the economy of scales to make them way more money than being able to visit these other ports. Uh, Nathan, book on Explorer this season in November. Does she come equipped with coolers in the stateroom? Yes. Yes. There are uh, all, almost, I think every Royal Caribbean ship has those little, and they're not freezers, but yeah, fridges, mini fridges. Absolutely. Hey, Beachy Mama, happy Margarita Day to you. It is National Margarita Day, isn't it? If my May 23rd cruise on Liberty gets canceled, can I apply my FCC to the cruise I already have booked on Oasis in November? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes. Jason Lickett, my daughter asked if I was listening to that Royal Caribbean guy again. Yes, that very handsome man on YouTube. Indeed. Uh, Daniels, just me or does anyone else miss that first smell of walking through the sliding glass that was on board when you first board the ship? Dude, I love that smell. It's the Royal Caribbean smell. I don't know how else to explain it, but it is. The, yes. Yes. A thousand times. Yes. Baltimore. That's a good example. Thank you, Steve and Kim. Yeah. At the end of the day, if there's a small port, whether it's Baltimore or Tampa, they're going to go somewhere else. Royal Caribbean International will go somewhere else. They'll make more money somewhere else. That's the bottom line. But they may send a celebrity ship there. They may send a Silver Sea ship there. So you're not going to be without cruises. They just might not be on Royal Caribbean. Now, of course, things can change. Don't forget. Of course, the port could upgrade its facilities or build a new bridge or whatever the case may be or a new cruise port. You never know. I mean, a lot of times cruises, cruise ports talk a big game until... It's really there. But I remember there was an article. This came out probably a year or two ago at this point um, where the Port of Tampa was like, listen, we've got a good cargo business going. We can survive on that. The cruise ships have always been icing on the cake. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. We'll see. Danny DiMatteo, how are Sean and Steph doing? You know, I am not very up to date on their current status. Um, I used to, she, Stephanie used to um, send out those updates. Uh, if you don't know, Sean and Steph are, YouTubers and Sean got diagnosed with some uh, nasty cancer um, right right before, right during the shutdown, something like that. Anyway, um, and she was sending out updates on the um, the website that you donated at the giving one of the, one of those websites. Anyway, I haven't seen an update in a while, so I'm not entirely sure. I'm probably the, not the right person to ask. Maybe somebody in our chat knows about that, but I hope they're okay. I hope no no news. I, I hope no news is good news. Let's put it that way. Daniel's Yankee Hanley's make a sense. For the Royal Caribbean smell. Oh, man, I'd buy that up like crazy. But you know what? Part of me says I'd buy that up. And then part of me says, you know, that's what makes it special. You know? I don't know. Hey, James says, with cruises going to Barbados now, will cruises not go out of Barbados stop? Wait, wait, wait sorry. With cruises going out of Barbados now, will cruises not going out of Barbados stop in Barbados for a port stop? Or will those stops not be happening anymore? Uh, no, I don't think they're mutually exclusive, James. So the answer to your question, let's say cruises are sailing from the U.S. and Barbados. And there's a scheduled stop in Barbados. They'll still go there. It, uh, that that stuff, uh, bar, there'd be no reason for Barbados to cancel that. So, um, Walter is welcome to banning Baltimore. No, 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 no. We're just talking about hypotheticals. Sorry. If you walked in there, it's probably no, 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 no. not at all, not at all. Uh, let's see here. Jennifer Blackman says, "Have you heard what will happen?" With cruises longer than seven days. We're booked on Miami for an eight-nighter at the end of July. No, you know, Royal Caribbean obviously put those bookings on hold. They not cancel them. They just put the pause button. And there's been no update. I think, honestly, here's my... Uh, Jennifer, I really believe Royal Caribbean is saying, we're not going to make a decision now because there's no point. There's no cruises. Why should, we, why should we make a decision which inevitably will bother somebody? Let's just wait until cruises actually restart. And then we have no choice but to make... Uh, a decision right there. I think that's the case. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it seems like Sean is not doing well, according to some of you guys in chat. I'm really sorry. Ugh, God, what a terrible disease. I mean, geez, Louise, you know. But I hope, 
I, I hope he pulls through. I really do. They, they seem like very nice people. I, I talked to them, you know, in a chat room or something like that once or twice, but they have a great reputation for a reason here on YouTube. Hey, Nick from Singapore is here. I think if China doesn't allow Royal Caribbean sale in July, Quantum will stay in Singapore again. Probably. I, I would think, Nick, at this point, uh, Quantum is probably not leaving Singapore until there's a really good reason to leave. Bessie says, we are booked on the Alaska cruise at the end of May. In your opinion, should we give up hope and lift the shift to May 22? No, I think you should let Royal Caribbean cancel on you. I wouldn't buy airfare necessarily, but I'd let Royal Caribbean cancel on you. Um, obviously, I don't know how long they could really take this, but I would let Royal Caribbean cancel on you. I'd wait a lot. You got better options if, if they do that. So, Family vlogs. When is cruising going to restart? We're not exactly sure, but you know what? Today's news is really good. Royal Caribbean had some very positive things to say, and a lot of the indicators are going. Probably the best news of today, the most tangible news of today, is um, Royal Caribbean saying that the CDC says that they're expecting to get the technical instructions to Royal Caribbean in a matter of days. And those technical instructions are what cruise lines need in order to be able to apply to do test sailings. That's a big deal, guys. Big deal. We've been waiting for this since October. So this is a big deal. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Let me take a sip of water here, and I'm going to answer Brandy's question. Brandy's question is, do you think cruises will give refunds for book cruises if vaccines are required, but kids can't get the vaccines yet? You know, it's a good question. Um, we don't know. The answer is we don't know. Um, I can tell you that Crystal Cruises, which recently announced they required uh, the vaccine, did say they would offer a scenario, uh, back, a refund in that scenario, Brandy, because um, the um, uh, if you're unable to get it, they would do that. That being said, let me put it this way, Brandy. You have a cruise come. I mean, your final. We're, I guess with final payment dates. Obviously, if you're past final payment, that's a different story. Don't. I wouldn't worry too much about that. But going forward, let's say cruises restart, whenever May, June, what have you. You have a cruise in October or July or whatever, and um, you know, you're, you're still not sure. Then maybe you have to have a gut check about final payment. But of course, unlike Crystal Cruises, Royal Caribbean's business is family cruising. So. I'm not sure how they'll handle that, quite frankly. It's just too early to know, but Rokerman has not said anything yet along those lines. Kenny, did it sound like the CDC is talking? It did. I really, yes, there's a lot of comments. Um, there was a comment from Michael Bailey who said that they're talking, what did Bailey say? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yes. So Michael Bailey, Royal Caribbean, this is Royal Caribbean International's president and CEO, said, and I quote, or actually, Michael Bailey said that Royal Caribbean has been in, quote, regular communication, end quote, with the CDC and expects to get technical instructions on what each ship needs in order to prepare itself for cruises. Here's the quote. We're literally expecting the technical specifications any day soon. So, yes, absolutely. I think, here's what I think is happening, guys, honestly, based on their comments. I think number one, Royal Caribbean has been, yes, they, they do talk to the CDC. I think the reality is both of them, both the CDC and Royal Caribbean, recognize it's in no one's best interest to restart cruises when the time isn't right. You know, Royal Caribbean said for a while that they're not going to rush back to service. And that's frustrating for you and me. But for a lot of other people, I mean, you know, for cruise fans, it's like, ah, right? We get frustrated with that. And uh, there, even Richard Fain talked about that in the call today. He said, you know, earlier this year, back a month ago or so, you know, to suggest that cruises restart when the you know, cases were spiking would have been crazy. So, uh, James, is the public going to know what those instructions are? That's a good question, James. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't thought about that. I, mean, I didn't consider that as a question. Maybe. Maybe. That being said, James, the better question, are we going to know that they, that they know? Like, is the fact that when... The CDC brings them the instructions. Will we know that it happened? That's the better question. Um, let's see. Hey, Sharon Stockman is here. Hello, Sharon. Chris, it's like, hey, go cruising. I'm doing the next best thing, getting out of cold New Jersey, going to Orlando and staying at the Grove Resort and Water Park coming up this Sunday. Nice. Ron Ladowski. What's up, Ron? 
Has Royal Caribbean addressed how they're going to handle cruises, which are currently... No, um, about the passenger element, they have not. I think just like the um, the longer than seven night cruises, my belief, my opinion, opinion, is they're waiting for cruises actually to restart and then they'll tackle that problem. Um, so, no, they have not. It's a good question. Ron wants to know what happens like, you know, if they're going to have 50% capacity, 80% capacity, and the cruise ship is already sold beyond that, what are they going to do? I'm not sure. Keith Bruce, what is the average time to receive refund? Um, for cruise fares, it comes a lot. It comes pretty quickly. I don't know the exact time. But that's a good question for one of our friends from MEI Travel who's in the chat with a lot of great travel agents in chat, and they can give you a ballpark idea. Um, but it's the the refunds are coming for the cruise fares have been coming pretty darn quickly. I mean, listen, there's I still hear some horror stories here and there. I do believe they are the exception, but. You know, I, I can't make promises and I'm not sure. Like, you know what lawyers always say? Past performance does not in, indicate what you're ex like, what you should expect to get. Kind of same kind of thing. But it's it's a lot better than it used to be. The horror stories of like March and April and May of last year, I think are behind behind us. Kathy, the CD says that we can cruise tomorrow. How long would it take the first paying cruise to leave port? Good question. So um, in order for crew, if we could restart right now, here's what would have to happen. Number one, you have to get crew members back on board. So the good news is the cruise ships are in all warm layup, which means they're not shut down. They're not in storage. They're pretty much ready to go. They need to be, but you need staffing. So number one, you need crew. In order to get crew, you're going to need probably a quarantine period. You, first of all, you have to hire them. Then you have to get them. You have to transport them from wherever they live over to Miami or where have you. Then you have to quarantine them. Then you have to get them on the board of the ship. That's easily a couple weeks. Best case, two to three weeks. Worst case, a month, right? Then you have to get the new protocols. So again, don't forget, Royal Caribbean has not announced their new, new protocols like for the United States. They have them for Singapore, but we don't know them yet for the U.S. You could figure they could probably pump those out in while we're waiting for these crew members to get back on board, right? Okay, you've got that. You've got the crew. You got to do a little bit of training. The crew get back on board the ship. It's not like they're doing exactly what they did before. There's new protocols. They, they have to test. They're going to, even if they could offer cruises, Royal Caribbean is going to offer test tailings anyway. They need to simulate some of these things with employees. Figure that's a week right there of, you know, testing at the very least. Doing a couple of test cruises, employees, travel agents, members of the media, things like that. And then maybe you could restart. It, it, that'd be my best estimate. So you're looking at what did I just talk about there? At least a month, right? Probably six to eight weeks. Maybe. Um, I think when MSC restarted operations in Europe, they did it in a couple, in, a, in about a month or so. So it's possible. Um, by the way, in, regarding the refunds, Jennifer Kellen from MEI Travel says 45 days is the average. There you go. And Sarah Ristine says, I got a refund less than a month. Uh, Steve Cohen got his refund in three weeks. There you go. That's great. And Becky says uh, from MEI Travel, the refund turnaround had been fairly speedy. Compared to last year, yeah. Let's not talk about nothing about last year. Where there's, we don't talk about Fight Club. We don't talk about what happened last year. Uh, Paul, are there any reported cases of COVID with a skeleton cruise lately? No. All of Royal Caribbean ships right now are provisionally green with with the CDC, which means they haven't had a COVID outbreak in at least uh, fourteen days, I believe. So they're doing really good with that. Uh, Mark, looking for Royal Caribbean soap? Where can you get some? eBay or it'd be eBay, dude. I've never seen that on eBay, but you never know. Charles wants to know any updates on departure ports other than Miami and Canaveral. Nope. There's been very, in terms of restart plans, firm plans. There are none. Nothing's really been announced, unfortunately. Uh, CPATV, if Royal Caribbean starts on the new Galveston terminal in April, what's the expected completion? I believe it's a year. I believe they said it's about a year. I think. Could be wrong on that. But check out, um, go to realcreamblog.com slash search. Search for Galveston. One of the last blog posts, I think, had it in there. I think it's about a year. I think. So, uh, Jason, where are the cruise lines putting up all these ships? I should do a video about that, Jason. Uh, they're, they're all around the world. Um, there's groups of them in different parts. Uh, there's a lot of them are off the coast of Florida in the Bahamas near Perfect Day, Coco Key. There's another set of ships. Um, by Southampton, there's another ship group of ships over in the Philippines. 
Um, there's a couple ships in the Caribbean, like around Barbados and St. Kitts, I believe. Um, but I'll do a video update, Jason. We should talk about that because that's a good topic. Um, Josh Taylor says, we assume Royal Caribbean will be started out in Miami or Fort Lauderdale. How fast do you believe Galveston will restart? I, honestly, the key word there, Josh, in your question is assume. And we really don't know. That's the thing. Um, I, 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 it would be, I would, it would, I would be remiss if I did not say I nor anybody really knows, um, I, I think the restart plan, whatever it will be, is going to be limited at first. But how fast it ramps up from there, like when will cruises start out of Galveston or Baltimore or Tampa or anywhere else, really has more to do, I think, with how how things go on board. Obviously, no problems. That would be number one. How the numbers look, a variety of other factors that we just simply can't anticipate right now. So. There isn't an answer. I know it's not the answer you're looking for, but it's the real answer. Jared, should I expect the water at beaches in Eastern Caribbean to be cold, too cold to go swimming in during early January? Depends on the year. I've been in the water in January. Um, it's not the warmest you've ever been in, but it's possible. I remember, uh, Jared, in February of last year, 2020, I was at Perfect Day Coco Key, and I went to the... Um, the Cocoa Beach Club, and I was like the only one in the pool, um, and that pool was really cold. I just realized that the microphone's like blocking my face, so I'm trying to be a good little YouTuber and get it in the proper position there. Oasis is docked in Matt's backyard. I wish. Do I collect any of the drink package cups? You mean these right here over my shoulder? Uh, any chance Royal Caribbean will send us to Cozumel and Coast, Costa? Oh, sorry. I missed the first part of the question. Zach, what is, Royal, what is Royal Caribbean sending say to do when a scheduled port is closed? Uh, sea days generally. I mean, they will try to get you another port, but that's a whole lot harder than it sounds because of scheduling. So worst case, sea day. Best case, you'll get in another port. Um, if, if Cozumel was, oh, Grand Cayman and uh, Key West is gone, almost certainly a sea day. Although that being said, Zach, that being said. Um, a lot of people who got emails last weekend from Royal saying that the cruise's visit to Key West is canceled and instead they're going to Perfect Day Coco Key. So you never know. But it's more of a scheduling question. Yeah, I agree with Sub Zippo about the water temperature. The January water at Coco Key is really cold, but you adjust to it and it's great. Once you get it's just, yeah, that's the old adage. Just jump in, get it over with, and then you'll enjoy it. Mr. and Mr. Vlogs, based on what I know, in all honesty, what's the likelihood that our June 21 cruise will actually sail? I have no idea. And what I mean by that is, I, I know you're thinking, Matt, you got to have like what I know. What I know is what I don't know. There's not enough information to make that kind of a guess, dude. I mean, I would be, I, I would, I'd have a, I'd have an equal chance. You should ask me what will be the winning lottery numbers on the Powerball on Saturday, because I have just about as good of a chance of guessing that accurately as I do of telling you this. Sure, there's some information out there, and today's uh, news is really good, really optimistic, but I I can't, nobody knows the answer to your question. Like, what are the chances? What are the odds? 10% or 90%? No one knows, man. Um, It's not the answer you want, but I got to be real with you, man. I, I don't want to mislead you. I don't want to give you false hope, and I certainly don't want to... Uh, dissuade you and make you feel like you're never going on a cruise again. Ha ha ha. Right? If you're somebody just joining, like, what the heck is he talking about? But yeah. Walter, I need a grubby next to Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> I'm sure it actually I think last I checked on eBay a long time ago, I think Grubby goes for more than Teddy Ruxpin because there weren't as many grubbies around. So Kathy, I need my magic eight ball. Never. That thing was evil. Ah, oh, you want the winning lottery numbers? All right. Here are the winning lottery numbers for next week. Ready? And the Powerball number is uh, Paul, have you interviewed anyone who missed their ship and what they had to do to catch up with the ship? I did not. I assume they all go home. I thought I assume they just fly on home, but I have not actually, Paul. It's a good question. Uh, Arthur, I appreciate you and everyone who put their info in the chats. New Royal Caribbean Cruiser here. Welcome. After spending way too much money on another brand, Royal Caribbean is amazing. Nice. Nice, dude. Well, Arthur, welcome. My name is Matt. Glad to have you here. 
Uh, Kenny, if we don't hear anything by mid-March, are you you are looking at July, August for real cruising? Don't know. Don't know. Melinda, is Royal Caribbean giving refunds or are they trying to force you to take a cruise? No, they're not forcing you to do anything. Either It's your choice, my friend. They're trying to entice you to keep future cruise credits because there's a lot of... Um, there's, uh, you know, they're giving you more money, extra bonus money by keeping it there. But if you want it, you can ask any of the travel agents here. They'll tell you. Boom. There you go. Yeah, Tony, I got to find where Joe Boo is. I don't know where he is. I got to find him. So. um, Do Teddy and Alf ever cruise with me? No, they just sit here on the. If I ever took them down from here, man, you should see the amount of comments I get. What happened to Alf for weeks? That was the question. <laughs> Not a real person. I think people should have to pay each time they ask you if a cruise will run. Hey, man, that's all right. Listen, I don't mind answering it, but I got to be real. You know, at the end of the day, guys, if you, you know, what's that? Um, I don't know who sings it, but what's the song? You know, tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies, tell me, tell me, right? Um, you can't deny. Is, is that Fleetwood Mac? I'm not sure, but anyway, like. If you want me to lie to you, I can lie, but nobody knows. Nobody knows when cruises will begin, and i it's a fair question. Like, people, you know, say, oh, Matt, based on what you know, like, I thought it's a really good question, but nobody knows. Like, there's just not enough information to do that. You can make guesses. You know, Kenny had a guess in there, but there's really no way to know with any kind of certainty, and, and, and I feel like at the end of the day, it's my duty to you guys, my obligation to take a sip of water. much better and to also be real with you guys and not give you guys false hope this is not the uh this is not a cult believe it or not uh this is not a um a cheerleading group and this is also not the doom and gloom group i gotta be as realistic as i can with you with what we know what we think we know and what we absolutely don't know and the chances of any cruise happening are definitely in the we have no idea now we'll see more stuff coming on later uh, yeah, Queen Peace is not a cult. LOL. I know, I know. It's all right. We're kind of cultish, but like, you don't call me dear leader or anything like that, right? I hope not. <laughs> so, Chris, what do you think the odds are people on January 22 on Odyssey will have to wear masks everywhere on board? That's a good question. I, I, I don't know the answer to that one. I, again, I don't want to mislead you in any way, one way or another, Chris. I think it would be, I, I, yeah, I don't want to mislead you. That's the best I'm going to say. So I don't know. Um, Let's see. Jason, anyone who notices the missing object from Matt's shelf next week wins a cruise paid for by Matt, right? <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, Let's see. <laughs> Ron, no, please do not call me dear leader. Please do not. I'm, I'm serious. Don't do that. Uh, Becky says, this is the, it's the best cruise support group ever, right? Yes, that's right. It's a support group. That's a good way of putting it. We got to be real, right? Something you have in it, you have to, like in a support group, you say, Sharon Stockman, you have a problem. You have to admit you haven't been on enough cruises yet. Sharon Stockman with the epic super chat. Woo! Sharon, do you ever listen to Chris's vlog on possibly going back to work on a ship? He's been told to get ready. Yes, um, I have. Um, there is a lot of, uh, crew members, not a lot of, but there are definitely some crew members like Chris who have mentioned that they have gotten rehired or at least they're planning on being rehired. Could that change? Absolutely. But that is part of the other, uh, really good news out there that there's a lot of positive, uh, momentum is right. Really the right word. So, uh, any, did anyone mention why Royal Caribbean went stock went up so much today? The problem is with tomorrow is you guys got to remember something about stocks. Stocks are not about what happened today or yesterday. When you buy stock, it's not like playing blackjack where you double down because you got a two aces in your hand, right? Stocks are a long-term play. You should not be, investors will tell you, any investor will tell you, when you buy stock, you're buying it for the long-term. And the reason why Royal Caribbean stock is up a lot today, despite losing a billion dollars, is because they have, um, um, there's positive momentum. There's a lot of optimism that they will be able to return to service, that they will be able to start cruising again, which means they'll be able to start generating revenue again, and they'll be able to start um, returning money on that investment. That's really the crux of it. And for a lot of people, it's hard to realize that when you look at the, you look at their, they lost how much money? I posted at realcreamblog.com today. In 2020, they lost $5 
billion with a B dollars in 2020 overall. And that sounds crazy. Why would anyone give them their money? Except you're not you're not giving them money based on what they did last year. You're giving them money because you believe they're gonna do better next year. And there's a lot of um good stuff. Don't double down with two aces. Oh, split. Yeah, split. I'm sorry. Gosh, you know, Jennifer, when I said that, I really felt good about that analogy. And you're supposed to split with aces and eights. You know what I meant. Whatever. Double down on a queen or whatever it is. Uh, do you remember the the April Fool's prank? Work for three days on a Royal Caribbean ship, sail for four days? I do not. <laughs> is there actually any crews that have set sail anytime recently? Yes, Garrett. Quantum of the Seas in Singapore. She's been sailing since December. December. Yep. Um, Gene Fulton hijacking Alan Fulton's crew uh, YouTube account. What's up, Gene? When can we go back on a cruise? Say for the people in the back a little louder, Gene. Hopefully very soon, Gene. Today's news is very good news. I like that. I'm sure tomorrow we'll have some negative news, but good news all around. Nick, do you think the double points will be extended again? I think they'll be extended as long as there are more cruise cancellations. I think there's really no reason not to, you know. Why not? Uh, Matthew Smith managed to watch all your show today. It is 1.20 a.m. Good Lord, go to bed for sure. But thank you for staying up late for with us today, Matthew. I appreciate that. I know that you and Brogan and uh, all our other British friends who stay up way too late hanging out with me, I really appreciate that. Uh, speaking of Brogan, Brogan had a call. Where's Brogan? He's staying up late. I'm going to answer the dude's question. Where was it? Bro? Oh, uh, what's your favorite neighborhood on Oasis class? Central Park. I'm a Central Park kind of guy. I mean, the Royal Promenade I love, but Central Park. Andre is a photographer for Royal Cribbing. Can't wait to go back, brother. I can't wait for you to take my photo. I really cannot wait because that'll mean we're both on the ship. Uh, let's see. We got time for another. Oh, we're coming up really on that. We got time for questions, you guys. Then I got to skedaddle out of here. Um, Tony, when are we cruising? Crushing again. Is that the new <laughs> key worth it? Right. <laughs> Good old spell auto autocorrect rather. Love it. Uh, Steve Cohen, get Mac to talk about cars if you really want to confuse them. Oh, God. Yes, please. Or, or put me to bed. Double down nine or 11 if the dealer has a weak card showing. Yeah, I know about the the weak card. Like they have like a two or a three. You always want, you assume they're going to bust. That's kind of the, of course, in my case, they usually get them like, they have a two and then they get a king and, and a eight, but that's how it works out. So what's happening after the stream? Matt's going to go lay on the couch and watch some TV and then go to bed. It's exciting. Uh, CPA TV, I really enjoy Key West, but I heard that Roll is replacing with Coco Key, which is great. Yeah, well, they're replacing... Key West Coco Key because Key West banned cruise ships, large cruise ships. So that's why. It's not Royal Caribbean's choice. They'd still be going there if they had the choice. Zach, will Greece be the stage show on Independence of the Seas when she sails again? Yes, Greece is the word still on Independence of the Seas. Absolutely. Uh, two to six is pretty weak showing. Yeah, but again, in my case, Sub Zippo, I always never works out in my situation. Kelly Hardy, your margarita is empty. You're going for a refill. Kelly, thanks so much for joining us here. Appreciate it. And, um, Last question from Chris Rowe. We loved Harmony of the Seas like you did and booked for January 22 on Odyssey. Are there three things on the new ship that you're most excited about? Yeah. Playmakers in the uh, in the C-Plex. That's number one. Number two, the things we don't know, Chris, because there's a lot we don't know yet about the ship, like entertainment on board. In Royal, I trust. I love what they do with the entertainment and things on there, so I'm excited to see what those are going to be, which will be many, I think. And um, number three, dining. You got a oh, or 270. You know what? Yeah, I mean, di I love, how about four? Dining on board Quantum Class Ship is fantastic. And of course, the shows in 270 are amazing. Spent a lot of time in 270. Really, really great. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here on YouTube. I want to say some thank yous right now to our super chatters today. Sharon Stockman, thank you for your super chat. Danny DiMatteo, thank you. Kenny K, thank you for your super chat. Kim Oakland, thank you for your super chat. Matthew Henning, thank you for your super chat and for staying up late. James Gatton, Thank you for the double super chat. I hope that Robert Noble um, forgives you for taking all the credit for making my lamp, which is, looks fantastic, by the way. Cruise Addicts, thank you for the super chat. Michael S., thank you for the super chat. Brogan, thank you for the super chat. And Jan Fagan got the party started really early today. Thank you for the super chat. Guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Every Monday, we're live right here on YouTube. And when we're not, we're over at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. If you haven't seen it, guys, there's a lot of new blog posts. There is four... 
I'm not doing the John Cena. I'm just doing the four. Four new blog posts out today. Lots happening. If you haven't seen it, check it on out. I got plenty more posts coming up tomorrow. We got a new YouTube video tomorrow. I promise it's legit. It's going to sound like a scam. It's legit. Check out tomorrow's YouTube video. Guys, have a great rest of your week out there. Stay safe. We're really close to the end of this. Um, do something fun, like maybe book a cruise. Give those people at MEI Travel a call. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Bye, everybody.